Welcome to a literature starring Samantha and Cassandra. Whoa. As as what? <laughs> as <themselves>. each other. <laughs> Do you remember that stand-up routine that we were going to do where I was going to come out on stage and I would be wearing you like a backpack? <laughs> like, I didn't know like, where I thought it was going, but now that you've said it, yes, I do remember that. <laughs> like, we would keep turning around and just, like, jumping. <laughs> like, you'd do a bit and then turn around and then I'd do a bit from your back? Yeah, and we're both wearing black, obviously. Yeah. And just, like, like turtlenecks, so it's just, like, our hips. Okay, so we look like, I don't know, Professor Quirrell. Harry Potter one. Yes. Which one are you? I'm Snape. No, not Snape. He's not even there. I'm Voldemort. <laughs> I'm the unicorn that gets eaten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, are you ready for some spoopy Halloween times? No, I thought we were doing Harry Potter because we started talking about it. <laughs> well, That's spoopy. This, there we, were this week we're doing a spooky story for Halloween. We're going to do the very famous Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Um, A.K.A. The Haunting, Haunting of, of Hill House. Of Bly Manor. Season 2 of Bly Manor. Of Bly Manor, yeah. Redux. Um, I, was super, of... I was super stoked when um, when I saw that they were doing that, when they saw that they were adapting it, because um, I loved The Haunting of Hill House so much. Now, as I've been watching it, and I'm only a couple episodes in, um, so no spoilers, but it's like, it's not as scary as Hill House is. I've heard that. <laughs> it's just not. That's like, why I won't let you do the book for mm-hmm. Hill House. I, I shall not allow it. Mm. You have been stopped. All right, you ready for a bedtime story? With yeah. Um, speaking of sleepy, bedtime stories, Sandy's bedtime. earphones are absolute garbage. So we shamed her into not using them, and now she's using her bedtime headphones, which are essentially like a headband. Do you want to take a picture? Yes, I do actually. Okay, so the turn of the screw by Henry James. No. So it was a no- it's a novella actually. So it's another little shoddy. Um, Is the book scarier than the show? Yeah. <gasps> huh. Honestly, mm-hmm. <laughs> like the show is more like. Uh, There's hidden ghosts. I saw a BuzzFeed no, listicle about I mean, when you're watching it. a horror movie, you're not experiencing it. Does that make sense? I feel like if you're reading a horror book, you're inside the protagonist's mind. And to what an that, extent. What? I can't read. I don't know. Scary so it was book. published um, in serial form, like our old friend Chuck Duff. It's already so short. How much, how, how long can you drag Probably this out like for? Probably like a chapter at a time. It was like 25 chapters long. What's his name? Henry what? Henry James. I was going to say like Winkle and like, like, like Fonzie. Is that his name? <laughs> <laughs> Fonzie um, wrote this book? So, yeah. 18 what? Um, 1898. And it appeared first in serial format in Collier's Weekly magazine. Which I didn't look that up, so don't ask me about it. Well, you um, sh- shouldn't have told me about it. Now that's all I want to know. Well, you can look it up on your own time. The version that I listened to was the audi- audible audiobook starring Emma Thompson and featuring Richard <gasps> Armitage. Oh! I know! It was like A-lister, star-studded blockbuster of an audiobook. Did they make it really spooky? It was pretty spooky, but I listened to it on one point, like, 45. <laughs> <laughs> um, to get through it in one day. So, I was like, so you know, it was like- Emma Thompson, but she was talking like this! <laughs> <laughs> um... So, so Henry James, he was more known for marriage stuff. Like, I haven't read them, but it seems like like a serious version of Austen is the impression I get from his other works. Like, more real realism, less spooky, spooky ghosts um, than this. But this is, like, his most adapted work, and I think pretty safe to say one of his most famous works. So, we start... Oh, God. The Turn of the Screw with an unnamed narrator, who I'm going to call Henry, because it's basically Henry James. Um... He's at a Christmas party in an old house where everyone is currently sitting around the fire telling ghost stories, as you do at Christmas time. Someone says that stories where a ghost is seen by a child are especially creepy. Yes. And then this older guest at the party named Douglas asks them something like, if a child seeing the apparition gives the story an extra turn of the screw, uh, what about a story with two creepy children? I know, everyone's making the title face. They're like, there it is. You can't what see that. does turn off the screw even mean? Like when you when you're screwing something and you turn it. Yeah, and I it? think I think it's like it seems like the title isn't that um that portentous. I don't know that important to the the themes of the story, but yeah, it seems like turn of the screw here means like amps it up. Um, um yeah, gives it an extra sense. turn of the screw means to amp it up. Um. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know how you say that. that. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is the old fashioned way of saying that, I guess. Um, like, tur- like turnt. <laughs> like lit turnt of the screw <laughs> Skr- turnt of the screw <laughs> turnt those kids screw. holding like fucking mm. like joints or something <laughs> so um yeah. yeah so he's like what about two creepy children and everyone's like sign us up but Douglas insists that he actually he, he can't tell you the story tonight because he has to send his servant to his house in London to get a manuscript of it um, he doesn't know it off by heart, um, but he's got this like primary source manuscript written by the actual person who experienced this visitation, um, and he'll send for it, and it'll come in a couple of days. Oh, yeah. Um, he, Henry gives the sense that he's like this guy Douglas has never brought up the story before in like any situation. Um, like this is well, him he's never been to a Christmas his party fear to tell the story. <laughs> He's ever been to a ghost Christmas party? <laughs> He's like, one day someone will invite me and then, gosh, I'll show them. <laughs> God, I can't wait. <laughs> me and my manuscript, we're ready. And like his knees like shaking in front of the fireplace, like, this is the moment. Every Christmas party, he's just like, <laughs> ghost. <laughs> someone say ghost? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> and they're like, nah, man, no one said ghost. <laughs> well, anyway, Henry James gives the impression that like this is especially awful too awful for douglas to feel like he can bring up maybe like personal to an extent um Uh, anyway the story was written down many years earlier by douglas's sister's governess oh no here she is um who douglas eventually admits um after being cajoled a little bit by the party guests that he did have a crush on he was a little bit in love with it. Everyone's like, what? Were you in love with her? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Cajoled by the party. <laughs> that one comment. And he was like, guys, stop. <laughs> this fucking guy. This is why you don't get invited to the ghost party. <laughs> <laughs> you little bitch. Uh, so like two nights later, the manuscript finally arrives. Nice. And Douglas provides his very patient friends some background before he starts to read. Oh my god, it's the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're Douglas. And you're the very patient party goers. No, right? that's Alana. I'm the one that's like, oh, what are you in love with? Her? <laughs> <laughs> the young woman who wrote the manuscript was 20 years old. And just finished with her education when she answered an advertisement for a position as governess. No, the no. employer was a rich, attractive bachelor. Oh. A bachelor employing a governess, you ask, clutching your pearls. Well, you see, he was securing her services to look after his niece and nephew. Uh, ah. Mm, whose parents, um, both of them have recently died in India. What? How? Um, India things. Oh, okay. I yeah. accept. <laughs> <laughs> um so this guy this hot uncle he set them up at his remote country estate in essex bly manor oh yeah mm. there it is netflix um, title mentioned. non-title yeah <laughs> the so they had a governess there before who was very lovely and young and beautiful and respectable but she oh, no. died oh, and no. here like the group of party goers ask how she died and one of them makes a joke about her dying of quote so much respectability they're like, what's your day of? Respectability? <laughs> That's me again going, what are you, in love with her or something? <laughs> what's your day of? I guess, yeah, and it, and the fact that it's the audience is kind of, like, skeptical encourages us to be skeptical. So it's not, it's like a ghost story told from a realist style rather than from a romantic style. Like, say, Jane Eyre or Wuthering Heights or, um, yeah, I don't know, I the, the, in the Mysteries Heights. of Udolpho. Like, it's, it's like... <laughs> Great like ghost story reference. Of like, I didn't get it. Man, this isn't a movie when they say that in movies. <laughs> and then they look into the camera. Like, what do you think this oh, is? Sorry. A movie? <laughs> um, so it's like a little bit like that. It's like he, he's trying to encourage us to be like a bit skeptical. A bit like, this is a ghost story for smart people. Is what he's trying to say. Anyway, <laughs> read this governor's position. Here's the catch. The position is isolated and lonely. Like, there's a couple servants and a cook and a gardener, and that's about it. And the bachelor, this hot uncle, stipulates that she must deal with all problems that arise by herself and never seek to correspond with him. He's like, don't bother me for anything. I don't care if they die. So he's like, I'm hot, but you can't talk to me. Exactly. I I know. (laughs) I love him. (laughs) I'm going to talk to him. (laughs) can't wait. <laughs> Nevertheless, the young woman accepts the position, 
Perhaps because of her attraction to her employer. No, the one guy's like, oh, what does she look attracted to him or something? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yes, insofar as you can you can confirm that in like the really vague Victorian language that he uses. So like, Does no he one's say ever... that he's hot, but like Victorian style? Yeah, that like he's very <laughs> attractive. He sit, he sit, he sits erect, <laughs> <laughs> or he sends a photo of his likeness. Has, like, good posture. Yeah, it's just so vague in English. This whole story, which kind I'm of like is employed, I think, on purpose to make it ambiguous in a lot of situations. So you're like, well, what happened? You're gonna get a bit frustrated with this at certain points. Great, I love getting frustrated. Um, at least you're forewarned. So here she meets the housekeeper. So she goes there. She meets the housekeeper, Mrs. Gross. Gross? Um, yeah, gross. But spelled like G-R-O-S-E. So not gross. Gross. Huh. Still gross. <laughs> um, and there she also meets the younger of her two charges, Flora, who is the most beautiful child in the world. I feel like we've come across Renesmee this Renesmee from Twilight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I wrote that down as well because I knew you were going to. Renesmee from Twilight? Renesmee from Twilight. Thank you. Um, she calls her beatific, like she is literally an angel child. Um, oh, though Flora strange. is so perfect, the governess gets a sense that she's the, the the cook is too glad to see her. Ew! The cook wants to fuck this like four year old. No, more like she's relieved. Like, thank God oh. you're here, and she's like, thank God. Why well, thank God I'm here? Something- How old is this creepy oh. baby? So I don't know. Her older brother is ten. Oh, let's say she's eight. That yeah, well, I, I I immediately cast her obviously as I'm sure you can imagine. Kristen Dunst in the Vampire Twilight. Yeah, Ren, yeah, Ren is so, it's crazy. Yeah. Later, she reflects. Oh, uh, the governess reflects that even from that very first day in her room, she encountered the strange. Um, on this first day, she thinks she hears footsteps and the crying of a child in the distance when she's sitting in her room. But at that point, she she's not suspecting anything, so she just dismisses them. She doesn't care. She's not. It doesn't register. You goddamn. She only kind of realizes it that it was happening later on. I hate that your window's like open and I'm just like, who's gonna be there? <laughs> it's a third floor balcony, so if someone appears, it, it's not it's, good. It's literally Dracula. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> like as a bat and that <laughs> yeah, that that Muppet bat from <laughs> <laughs> Um so she, yeah, she's stoked to have such a pretty pretty and polite child to teach. She chats for a bit with Mrs. Gross and asks her about Flora's brother, Miles, who is 10. Mrs. Gross emphasizes the boy's good looks and the governess is like, oh yeah, like his uncle. (laughs) (laughs) He says something like that. What's up Um, with these hot kids? I don't want no hot kids. That is hot. I don't want hot children. (laughs) Um, And then they have an exchange here, which is like, he likes them young and pretty. Who said that? that, But she doesn't Um, know who he's talking about. She, she, they don't kind of know who each other are talking about. The governess assumes she's talking about the the uncle. The hot uncle. Everyone's like, huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, there's that. Mrs. Gross is chill, though. She lets it slide. She tells the governess that Flora's brother will arrive on Friday um, from his boarding school. So the governess oh. decides that she and Flora will meet him together at the station, which is, like, the nice and proper thing to do. So, she spends the entire next day with Flora, who shows the new governess around her big old haunted house with delight. (laughs) Great. Um, This this is the ghost, and here's the uh, other one. Never open that door. (laughs) If you hear screaming, it's fine. (laughs) uh, Don't talk to my hot uncle. Don't look into this mirror after the sun has gone down. Um, (laughs) Don't say Bloody Mary three times in front of the mirror. Or anywhere, really. (laughs) Just down. <laughs> Reflecting on the experience from her position later on writing the manuscript, the governess talks about how optimistic she felt and how favorably she saw the house then. She thought it was, like, handsome. Which directly <laughs> contrasts her house. present feelings towards Bly as an ugly house uh, and very, like, a wayward drifting ship that uh, she herself was at the helm of. Oh, you like ships. I do, which is why I included that quote. I uh, know. Now, the governess is feeling a little weirded out by a letter from her employer, her uncle, that came in the mail on her first day. It yeah, bro, you're in the ran... same house. Right? They're in huh? the same house. Why would he no, send No, no, no. He letter? lives in a house in London. Rich uh... people. He's got he's put the kids in this country house and he's like, I don't want to hear about it. 
That's great. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, he's not like locked up in his attic. Like, <laughs> he, like was, he was a fucking he phantom was, like, of the opera. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I pictured it. It's like sealing his letters with wax with like the big skull, Just like the... pushing them under the door. <laughs> No, mailing it. Like, it, it has a stamp. <laughs> and it just comes back around. <laughs> so funny, because the guy who does picks up and delivers the letter is actually named in this story. His name's Luke. <laughs> so they would be like, poor old Luke. Yeah. Has to pick up the letters, take them to the post office, pick them up again, bring them back. Yeah, so the letter that she receives from him basically reads, deal with this, I don't care, don't tell me what it is. I don't care. <laughs> Why would you need to write that? And then enclosed with it is another letter. Oh. From Miles's headmaster saying that Miles is expelled from his school. So oh. she's like, uh-oh, I got a stone-cold brat coming. And so she's naturally a little bit stressed that she's going to have to deal with this all on her own as per her instructions, right? Do we know why he was expelled? Does it say in the letter? No, it doesn't. So oh. this is a huge mystery as well. Part of the, the huge mystery of the, of the book. One that kind of gets answered, but also kind of doesn't. Um, yeah, there's a bit of that. So she asks Mrs. Gross about it. Mrs. Gross is shocked. She's like, no, Miles is a mostly good boy. (laughs) Mostly. (laughs) (laughs) He couldn't possibly do anything bad enough to get expelled from school. And the governess is like, what was that thing that you said really quiet? And Mrs. Gross is like. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean? Huh? The cook? (laughs) (laughs) You're the cook. I'm the. (laughs) Me? (laughs) (laughs) Huh? (laughs) That's how I imagine everyone at this house. It's like, huh? <laughs> and, and so Mrs. Gross is like, well, you know, like, old boys should be a little naughty. Like, otherwise... Boys will be boys. Otherwise they may as well be little girls, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> old boys should sexually harass girls at one point. It's just boys stuff. Old I boys right? should kill small animals and start fires. <laughs> old otherwise should... they're basically girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeffrey Dahmer, but, um... <laughs> anyway... Um, You're not so he's like, you know, like, he, she's like, he's not soon, naughty, right? he has spirit, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> um, so a few hours before leaving to meet Miles, the governess approaches Mrs. Gross once more, questioning her about the previous governess. She's like, hey, yeah. Uh, how she die? How she die? <laughs> that, <laughs> that bitch before she die? How? <laughs> hey, you know me, but not me? How did? <laughs> <laughs> um, Mrs. Gross describes the previous um, governess as young and pretty, but when the topic turns to the woman's death, Mrs. Gross becomes evasive, claiming she does not know why or how the other young woman died. Oh, really? Mm. Really, Mrs. Gross? Mm. <laughs> so they're a little bit late picking up Miles, who's waiting for them, standing outside of the inn. And what oh, do you know? so pissed. He exudes the same beauty and purity as Flora. He's just... Perfect. Another Perfect vampire energy. child. Joining Mrs. Gross back at Bly, the governess rejects on the basis of Miles' outward loveliness the idea that the headmaster may have been in any way justified in expelling him. She's like, he's so nice, he's polite, he's gorgeous. What's wrong? What'd he do? He looks like Brad Pitt in an interview with the vampire. <laughs> what are you talking about? And then Mrs. Gross is like super on board with that. She's like, yeah, stupid she headmaster said. doesn't know shit and they determined to do nothing in regard to Miles' expulsion. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Gross well, is like, what guy. are you going to do? Are you going to tell the uncle? Are you going to write to the headmaster? Are you going to try and figure out what happened? And she's like, no, I will ignore it and I won't even bring it up with the boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be upset. Just know that I don't agree with it. And my carpet will slowly get higher and higher with all the things that I sweep underneath it. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you write that down? Or did no, I didn't. That wasn't. That was off. The Whoa, top. improv on yeah. the fly. Whoa. <laughs> Someone's um, funny. They embrace like sisters slash co-conspirators, whatever. So time passes by. The governess governesses, and the kids give her little, if any, trouble. Uh oh. Yeah. So each evening, just by happenstance, she gets an hour to herself to brush her hair or campaign for women's votes or whatever the hell she does for fun. How long does she take to brush her hair? An hour. Oh my Let's god. See. That's haunted. That's an that's a haunted act. <laughs> and with the hair brush, you know, like I'm gonna the, do the, that now. I have this cool ass vanity table slash like the fuck. Nook. And yeah, and you're just gonna look at yourself like with Kate's like brush, you know, the boar the boar hair. The boar's brush the one that really And you one, just yeah. look at yourself. Oh my god, that's so creepy. That's I terrifying. should get a pearl handled one. Oh my god, why are you trying to be a human ghost? <laughs> Can you stop? Can you enough? 
this particular night, during this little hour she has to herself, she takes a walk around the grounds, fantasizing unrealistically Hot about uncle. meeting someone. Hot there. Uncle, She's like, yeah. she'll turn the corner and someone will be there. We infer that she means hot uncle. Hot uncle. Yeah, of course. However, because, when oh. she comes back in view of the house, she does see a stranger. Is it the cook? Again? A man. Stan- the, the cook's a woman. Oh, I, I thought it was a dude this whole no. time. Oh, the cook. Bro, I thought No, hang it was on. A Mrs. Gross dude. is the housekeeper. I don't know who the cook is. We don't yeah, see, I always think the cook's a dude because the, the <laughs> cook goes, you like some young and pretty. And I'm like, no woman would say this. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. That was Mrs. Gross who said that. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. We have to start from the entire <laughs> it's beginning. It's just like cooking his head around the door like, hey. <laughs> I really like cook- some young and pretty. When I think of the cook, I think of Chef from South Park, you know? <laughs> and he's just like, he's got a wooden spoon. He's like, In the TV show, pretty. the cook is a guy. And, and he's perfect. And I write his name in my notebooks. He's beautiful. His name's Owen. Um, so there's a stranger. It's a man standing atop one of the house's towers looking straight at her. The, the air fuck? suddenly goes still, and there's a hush. Her He's on top of a tower. Like a battlement kind of thing. Oh, okay. Like, I don't know, it's weird and romantic, like neo-romantic yeah. sort of manner. Get down from there. There's like a tall balcony on the tower or something. <laughs> get down from there. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, how did you get up there? <laughs> Her confrontation with him lasts a long, intense moment before he passes from one of the tower's corners to the other. And then out of sight. In retrospect, the governess remembers that the man turned away from her without ever breaking his stare. Which I think is super creepy. How did he do that? Did he, were his eyes at the back of his head? Oh, I thought somehow. (laughs) (laughs) I just demonstrated by like swiveling on my chair while looking at Sam in the eyes. It was creepy. It is. And that's one thing I hate that people do, but I'm also obsessed with. People do that to you a lot? I guess it's the opposite of that, but it's like when people move their eyes and then they move their head. Why? I don't know. Why it just seems like super predi- like predatory. Wait, in the animal eyes... sense, not in the... Wait, hang on. Move their eyes. Like, I'm looking at you and then I look at something else and then move my head. Do you think that's predatory? Yeah, so the eyes move before the head. But so, I like... gotta check my peripherals. What are you talking about? I'm... I don't know. I just... I'm gonna move my eyes, Sandy. It. It's like... No, uh, that's it's nothing. Creepy. It's creepy. That's irrational. You're terrible. <laughs> I'm allowed to not move my head if my eyes don't see something interesting. Okay, Alana has her stupid little goblin hand up. <laughs> <laughs> that's rude. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god. Has he got glasses? He what, yeah. Does it say that he was an eye zombie? He's from. I love him. He's beautiful. Okay. I lo- have you ever seen Eye Zombie? He's I have. So good. Oh, Rahul Kohli from oh. Eye Zombie. Whom we love? Who we stand? Yeah. So he's the cook in the show. He's the, the cook. I thought he'd be the hot uncle. The uncle. Oh, someone not hot actually. Oh, really? Yeah. No. No. That that angle is taken away. Oh. Well, at least we got hot cook. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Cook. No. At this point, the governess thinks the guy was an intruder. Well. So she ruminates on it for days while making daisy chains and reading poetry or whatever Victorian era homeschooling involved. She never she... acts on things, does she? She's like, I hate that he got expelled. Ugh. What are you going to do? Under the rug. <laughs> oh, there was, an, there was an intruder. What are you going to do? She's also still ruminating about Miles' expulsion from school. Instead of doing the normal thing of finding out, she decides that it must be that he was too refined for the, quote, (laughs) horrid, unclean school world um, and has been punished for being so perfect. Um, In short, they hated because they (laughs) ain'ted. That's pretty good. Um, uh, The Whoever plays the governess, is it that girl that's in you and her name is Love? I haven't seen you, but she was in the first season of Pointing oh. Hill House, and she played Nell. Yep, that is, yeah, that's her. Okay. Just because um, when you go Netflix, She's gorgeous, they have they said these it little... in the 80s, and the fashion's amazing. Oh, they said yeah. it in the 80s? Amazing. Yeah, in the 80s. Because um, on Netflix, there's like little previews, right? Mm-hmm. And in the little preview, the governess is like this black woman. And I'm so like, that's the first that's governess. The de- I'm like, you're that's dead. That's the dead governess. I'm like, don't show me the dead governess. How does she die? 
As much as the governess enjoys her charges, she's concerned that both children are weirdly impersonal. Like, they ask her all sorts of stuff about herself, but she knows near nothing about them. Um, it comes across at one point, too, like, they have secret understanding with each other to, like, stage manage her. <laughs> what? Yeah. How? Are well, they like, just, you like, know, like, lights you keep her busy while I go do something. <laughs> like, ah. Weeks go by, one Sunday rolls around, and the governess comes downstairs to meet Mr. Mrs. Gross, sorry, for church, only to see the same man from before. Ooh, looking directly at her through the dining room window. So standing outside the house, looking at her through the dining room window, not Stop. 10 feet away. Stop it. In an Stop instant, she gets it. this flash of insight, this certain knowledge um, that the man is looking for someone other than her. Ew, I've got goosebumps. I hate this. She runs outside to confront him, but he's gone. Oh, motherfucker. He's, he's fast. She <laughs> she he's... turns to the... <laughs> You, if you see a ghost disappear, man, they're fat. <laughs> oh, he's a fucking ghost? Oh my god. She turns to the window to stand where he had stood. At that moment, Mrs. Gross enters the dining room and is startled uh, in the exact same way. <laughs> Except it's the governess who's staring from outside. She's like, what the fuck are you doing out there? He's like, <laughs> Pretty much. Um, Mrs. Gross breathless is like, bitch, what has gotten into you? You look like you've seen a ghost. And then, like, winks at the camera. <laughs> the governess responds by saying she cannot go to church because she is too stressed. Um, and God will that, calm you down. And the, <laughs> the claims that the fright Mrs. Gross just had wasn't as half as bad as what she herself saw just a few moments ago. She then spills the beans about her two encounters with the oh, intruder, um, which bewilders and frightens her colleague. She calls the man, quote, a horror. Um... And tells Mrs. Gross that she feels like she's got to stand guard over the home. She's got to, like, keep a lookout instead of going to church. Does this ghost look scary in the TV show? <laughs> he's the he's another guy from the first season. <laughs> oh. He played her brother in the first season. He's He does a really good job. Like, he can be quite threatening, um, but handsome, you know? Ooh, I'm into that. You, you know, I, I like being handsome into that. and threatening. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Gross asks what the man looked like and the governess describes him um as being handsome and threatening oh sorry handsome, yeah well yeah handsome <laughs> threatening he also doesn't wear a hat which again in the olden days in victorian times was like not wearing shoes so it was like are you okay what's wrong he's if a you weren't wearing a hat if you're a dude not wearing a hat or even a woman um he also apparently had very red hair uh and a pale face mrs gross is like oh shit you saw peter quint oh fuck what who that who is Peter Quint, you may well ask. I just did, yeah. Well, I'll have you know, Sam, that Peter Quint is he fucking uh, was dead? the hot uncle's former valet. Oh, bro, you said was. <laughs> At the governess's questioning, Mrs. Gross reveals that Quint was actually in charge of Bly last year. Um, it seems like it was sort of a casual by proxy thing, like he just stepped into that role rather than being officially named the in-charge guy. Mm -hmm. um, maybe he just happened to be the most senior male staff member around. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can't have seen him, unnamed oh. governess narrator, because he's been dead these last five years. <laughs> <laughs> My constituents. That's still that um, joke I'm saying. Oh but yeah. So we uh. both decide, um, me, governess, you, Mrs. Gross, okay. that um, we're dealing with a ghost. Yep. We, with a feeling of sudden clarity, the governess exclaims that Quint had been looking for Miles. She's just certain of it all of a sudden. She's just like, he's looking for Miles. Oh, that fucking kid killed him. Uh, she wonders why neither child has ever mentioned the man before, if he was, like, such a big part of their lives for so long. Mrs. Gross reveals that Quint had been, quote, too free with Miles, which, I, which she kind of means as too casual and friendly, like, not respecting of class boundaries. Oh, uh. Um, and that apparently she um, she took it up with Miles. She was like, hey, he's being too free with you. And he's like, so are you, lady. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's it to you, toots? <laughs> it's less scary when they're like, <laughs> like Brooklyn the kids. <laughs> <laughs> they got like gum all the time and like an askew baseball cap. <laughs> It's like a really old like baseball mitt from like your if dead older brother who's in the war. I would just be impressed. Like I would just be like, "Damn, 
I guess you're in charge now. <laughs> Sandy, please. <laughs> you're almost 30. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, Quint, according to Mrs. Gross, did with everyone as he liked, which aside from being one of the most Victorian things anyone could ever say, could mean anything. Like He could literally just say yo to someone and she's like, good God. Yeah, well, literally that. It could be anywhere from that, like just being rough and having or an accent and maybe someone. like sh- using contractions to maybe being like a sexual predator. I like, literally it could be said anything someone. in that spectrum. What'd you say, sorry? I literally, I've, this is the third time about, I'm going to say it and I hate it, raping someone. Yes. He's so not. still haunted by the image of Peter Quint, the governor sleeps fitfully, if at all, and remains convinced Mrs. Gross had left out some important detail about him. She's like, what's this lady not telling me about this guy? On the other hand, she's thinking to herself, well, maybe this is like an opportunity for me to be heroic and like protect these kids and really impress senpai at the same time, you know? Um, later, with Miles inside, the governess watches Flora play on the bank of the lake when she becomes aware of a third presence. Oh, my th- The governess turns her eyes to Flora. No, don't, do. Who was doing that thing where kids, like, make a little boat out of, like, a leaf and a stick. Oh, I hate that. Flora seems oblivious. That's not seaworthy at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Well, we'll have a discussion in depth about that later. Flora seems oblivious for the to, Patreon <laughs> to any sort of weird presence. Almost too oblivious. Fuck this bitch. Mm. Like she does know and is pretending not to. Mm. The governess then shifts her eyes in the direction of their visitor. No, least. don't do it. Don't. Just but don't the narrative moves forward to later in that afternoon, <laughs> when the governess informs Mrs. Gross about the encounter. Um, she claims that the children, quote, Smash cut. no. Um, it's so vague, but we have to assume she means that the children can see ghosts. She's like, they know. I'm like, they know what? You that know. They, that there's ghosts. <laughs> the cook's like, what? Me? Uh, who? Mm-hmm. What? Huh? <laughs> um, so, yeah, we assume she means that the children can see ghosts and are keeping it to themselves. Ex- explaining that Flora saw the presence of the lake but said nothing. So, who is the figure? A woman She's dressed in governess. black. With a dreadful face. Um, and the governess says that this woman appeared out of nowhere. Looking at Flora with, quote, intention. I don't know what that is. It's another weird, vague Victorian thing that could mean any number of things. It's this look. I'll give it to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take a photo of that? <laughs> I'm just like, no, just imagine um, in Bridesmaids when Annie um, tr- tries to look like a penis and she's like... <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's, a, it's, it. it's that intention yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> responding to mrs gross's questions the governess claims that the woman is miss jessel her predecessor even though she'd never seen her before um she's like me she's as well certain, she's just possessed with the knowledge you know um and that she's certain flora will lie about it mrs gross defends flora she's like no she, she just probably hasn't seen it i believe you that it happened but i think that flora is innocent is kind of the um, the housekeeper, Mrs. Gross's position. You was the governess right now and be like, nah, man, she did, like, she looked with her eyes and then with her head and just was and fucking then, and <laughs> Burn and her. Just, Burn her yeah. in a pyre. <laughs> she can't be saved. So the governess says that Miss Jessel, quote, fixed Flora um, with the determined eyes, um, that look, and remarks on Miss Jessel's beauty as well. So, um, at Everyone's this, hot in this dead ghost manner. Yeah, I guess. that's true. Um, at this, Mrs. Gross speaks of Miss Jessel as infamous, as an infamous woman, and reveals that, surprise, surprise, Miss Jessel had an inappropriate relationship with Peter Quint. They were fucking, yeah. They sure were. Clinging to Mrs. Gross in distress, the governess laments that the children are lost beyond her control. What does this mean? I don't know. Who, they seem fine. Like, uh, yeah. Like, if they know about the ghost, Satan can get in. I don't know. Satan's Maybe, already in. There's a ghost, man. I have like a paragraph of me just speculating here. Maybe, <laughs> maybe just that if the children knew all along about the ghosts, then she's protecting them from nothing. But also now she's learned about Jessel and Quint's prior relationship with the children. Is she like jealous of them to some extent? Does she have any idea? Does she have an idea that they have some sort of hold over the children that are corrupting them somehow? The first one know. sounds the most likely and the least deranged. What that Satan oh. can get in. Uh, no, the second one then. Oh, but actually, from nothing. 
Anyway. The least deranged. <laughs> well, that bit me in the butt. All right, the I'm governess gonna... and Mrs. Gross meet up again later. And they're like, we're going to get through this with poison rationality. <gasps> Panic at the disco. <laughs> then they, they talk in the governess's room until the governess is convinced that Mrs. Gross does believe her. And I think Mrs. Gross does believe her. The governess returns to her pupils and feels ashamed at having thought Flora capable of the cunning required to see a ghost and pretend not to. Um, and like, and I guess the reason that she might do that or whatever. Later, the governess pries a little bit into Mrs. Gross about when Miles had been bad in the past. She's like, hey, remember when you said that thing in like really small letters about him sometimes being naughty? Make it big. Make it big. <laughs> Zoom <What>? in. <laughs> what is <laughs> enhance? <laughs> you know, oh, that's my favorite uh. trope in in like shows when they have just yeah. like a random like blurry footage and they zoom in and it's like one eighty. Like, so clear. <laughs> it's like four K. Mrs. Gross finally tells her that her previous reference had regarded the time Miles had spent with Peter Quint. Um, this like inappropriate close relationship they'd had. Mrs. Gross defends, defends Miles, though, pointing out that Miss Jessel had not disapproved of his and Quint's um, chumminess. Getting fed up with the governess's relentless questioning, apparently, Mrs. Gross fires back some retort. She's like, why do you want to know any? <laughs> Wouldn't you want to know? There's ghosts. Yeah. Man. <laughs> the governess pieces together um, her colleague's revelations and presumes that Mrs. Gross's silence signifies her agreement. Mrs. Gross confirms that whenever Miles had been with Quint, Flora had been with Miss Jessel. So it's like these two corrupting influences um, working on the two children. No, the children are the corrupting influence. <laughs> oh, yeah. Demon children. Demon children. They killed them. As yeah, they Mrs. did. Gross... Why? <laughs> I'm serious. As Mrs. Gross again defends Miles, the governess reassures her that without more evidence, she can accuse no one of being naughty and morally reprehensible at this juncture. He got expelled from school, bitch. <clears throat> For being too perfect. That's just, that's not in the letter. <laughs> Several days pass without anything spooky happening. Oh. The governess keeps the children under her constant supervision. She's kind of smothering them. Um, she finds herself constantly hugging them more and more with sharper passion. She's like, oh. I, lo I love you, children. She gives and they're them just like, <laughs> like patting her awkwardly in the back. I thought that was like, really good. Where's the hot uncle? God. He's not to be disturbed, Sam. Don't I want to disturb, disturb him. him. <laughs> I want him to be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she wonders if they're aware of her suspicions about them being in danger. So for their part, the two children seem to become increasingly fond of her and seek to please her as much and as often as possible by doing good maths and stuff the governess questions whether an ulterior motive exists in their newly amplified affection like are they trying to trying to hide butter something? her up yeah the lull is broken one night great when the governess is startled from her nighttime reading not by any noise or anything she just suddenly looks up from her book oh well, that's even like, worse yeah Aww. she just like knows something is up you and fucker. So she, you absolute fucker. I didn't write this. She quietly rises from her bed. Don't, bitch. Just stay in there. She leaves the room. Nah, bitch, no. And moves quietly to the top of the staircase. Oh, you fucking dick. Th these are the girls that are like, oh, it's that nice in the basement. I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> Don't. Her candle suddenly goes out. Of course it does. Oh, my God. And she sees no. Peter Quint. No, thanks. Halfway up the stairs. No, I don't want that. They stare each other down intensely oh, for a long yuck. time. Oh, my goose pimples. The governess refusing to back down. She's convinced by the dead silence that the vision is unnatural. She's like, if he had been a real intruder, one of them would have said something. Like, something would have happened. And then the figure disappears as if to confirm this theory. Great. One of the, the things I like, and I think it comes up in the novel, is that, like, each time he gets closer. So, like, first he's on the, the battlements, is quite far away. And Second time, through the window. Third time, on the stairs. Fourth time, he's fucking her. I don't know. I hate <laughs> anyway. How many I times like do you have to see a ghost before it fucks you? Four. <laughs> At least ask, three. Ask, what's that website? Quora? <laughs> I love Quora. Oh my god, don't. I genuinely love Quora. Times? 
I love cool. Um, you know, um, whenever I go through uh, relationship <laughs> problems, which is a lot oh. for me personally. Um, <laughs> like nothing's wrong. There's just something wrong with me. I'm like, he, we're perfectly fine. And I'm like, um, but what, what if like, like a really specific question? And the, someone out there has also asked has this already question. asked it. Yeah. And I'm someone like, you know also what? with an anxious Thank attachment you. style. And I'm like, you know what? Thank you. Thank you. Sexy girl butt munch ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. It's my username. <laughs> it's oh, ninety nine because they're just cuddling. <laughs> <laughs> ninety nine is the spooning number. Sixty six is spooning, but your head's at the foot of the bed for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why they would you be. Maybe you want to be closer to the TV or something. <laughs> Then you guys fell asleep. Oh my god. <laughs> but 99 is just the, the spoon and one. The spoon and one. I'm sorry, but is 96 like sleeping head to toe? No, but um, one time at work, um, we had to like name our favorite sex positions. It's like a fun mm. getting to know you game. And I wrote down really? um, the 96 and I was like, that's like 69, but you don't look at each other and you just turn around. Um. And everyone was like, is that a real thing? I'm like... If you go out with me, it is, yeah. <laughs> and uh, no one went out with me. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> I was like, boys, <laughs> come on. Mm. The governess returns to the room she shares with Flora. What? She, she shares see... a room with a little girl? Yeah, I think just... Oh, great. She's... You didn't mention that. Well, it's, it, it seems like it was fairly normal back then. For um... like, I don't know. Like, if you, when you share a room with a baby, to just to make sure it doesn't suffocate itself and sleep. And that would just last longer back then, I'm guessing. I don't really know. I don't think SIDS affects, like, eight-year-olds, but sure. Anyway, Flora is not in her bed. Great. But the bed's curtains have been pulled forward as if to disguise this fact. Uh, of course it's four <laughs> poster beds with the curtains. It's the perfect <laughs> ghost bed. Oh, God. oh, my God. The governess freaks out. She's, like, she's way more freaked out by this than by seeing the ghost of Peter Quinn <laughs> on the stairs. Somehow this is worse. Well, it kind of is. That's fine. Can't get fired for seeing a ghost. Being fired is the worst thing that can happen to a person. The worst thing is the hot uncle never showing up. He actually does I'm I'm so sorry. This book has been pronounced over. (laughs) (laughs) Sam just reached over like she's going to hang out with Cole. (laughs) So Flora's gone from the bed. But then the governess notices a movement from behind the window blind. And then Flora... As soon as he said that, I saw Brian's shadow movement. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> and Flora emerges from behind the window, blind. With blind? With a great expression on her face. She's very serious. Oh. Um, Flora immediately seizes the high ground, telling off the governess for wandering around at night. Precocious little girl. And asking where she's been. <laughs> and the governess is immediately on the back foot and like feels like she has to explain herself. And she's like, hey, I, I just... The cook's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, why are you here? <laughs> he's got a spoon. He's like, <laughs> You never cook. You just have a spoon. <laughs> um, the governess explains her absence and questions Flora, who claims she could sense that the governess had left and woke up. Um, and thought that there was someone was walk. Oh, my God, Brian. I know. I know. Fuck that dude. <laughs> oh, God. Can you please tell him, fuck that dude? <laughs> From both of us, sincerely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Flora thought she could sense someone outside walking on the grounds. According to Flora, there was no one outside. Yeah, sure. The governess, though, is convinced Flora's lying about that. And thinks there was someone outside. And she asks Flora why she drew the bed curtains to make it look like she was still in bed. Mm-hmm. Flora easily brushes this off, saying that she hadn't wanted to frighten the governess, who could have returned at any moment. She didn't want like, to freak her out. Please. Sure. Henceforth, the governess... Henceforth. The governess stays up most nights. One evening, she walks to the landing and she sees once more the apparition of Miss Jessel. She's sitting at the bottom of the stairs, her back to the governess, her head in her hands like she's weeping. Almost immediately after appearing, the vision vanishes. A number of evenings pass after this without another event. The night she finally decides it's safe to sleep at her normal bedtime, she Hmm. wakens at midnight to find her light put out. Oh, motherfucker. Certain Flora was the one who extinguished it. She gets out of bed and finds Flora again at the window. Stop the doing governess, that! The governess decides Flora must be communicating with the ghost of Miss Jessel and careful not to disturb her. 
ventures out to find a room with a window that looks out on the same scene so she might be able to eavesdrop and see what Flora is looking at. Um, there, from her window, I think in the dining room, the governor sees Miles out on the lawn. No, don't. I hate that. I hate that more than if it was a ghost. Oh, you look day. like a nun now, not like a beautiful French woman. Now you're just scary. <laughs> you're a murdered. It's the keepers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the next day is the children stroll together on the lawn under supervision. Fuck them. Uh, um, fuck those kids. And I think, and she writes, in one of their most manageable moods, which is so funny. Yeah, what does that um, mean? And they're looking at a book together. Great. The governess informs Mrs. Gross of Miles's midnight naughtiness, and she tells Mrs. Gross that what went down after she had found him outside. So when she had appeared on the lawn, he had promptly come to her, and she had led him inside without a word. The governess had then sat at the end of Miles's bed and thoroughly questioned him. He was smiling. <laughs> he explained that he'd wanted her to think him capable of being naughty and bad. Um, then he'd given her a kiss and gone into further detail about his plan. According like to Miles, Tom? he cooked up his little prank with Flora to disturb the governess so that she would then get out, get up to find out what was going on. He'd been delighted that she'd fallen for it and expressed pride in being bad enough. She's like, weird, but sure, good job. I yeah, like weird work. flicks, but okay. Like, yeah. go back to bed. <laughs> it's cold. Um, and then they had a hug and, and she went back to bed. Mrs. You Gross didn't. Like, you missed weird. out on my really gross joke, and I wish I hadn't brought it up because now I have to bring it. I up I did again. miss it. I'm sorry. Because you were like, he gave her a kiss. I'm like, oh my god, with tongue. <laughs> and he just kept <laughs> powering through. <laughs> no, and like they talk about. I guess people kissed each other more back then because like, I didn't put it in because I didn't want to have this conversation. Oh, we're having it. Yeah, they just kiss each other. Everyone kisses everyone. Like on the mouth. Like, like she and the, the I don't know. I don't know. But she and the cook kiss. When they embrace, they're like, oh, you know, when they're like having. It might just be like a. Maybe yeah, and so and she kisses the kids as well all the time and snuggles them and hugs them and gives them kisses on the tops of their heads. I assume. Top of their stupid ghost heads. Yeah, Yeah. that's it. I think the ending of the book is gonna be everyone was dead all along. (laughs) Okay. Or Flora was actually Miles. It's Fight Club. So Mrs. Gross is like, okay, that's weird. And the governess is like, don't you get it? <laughs> the children have been meeting regularly with the specters of Quint and Miss Jessel. And they're trying to hide it from her. She goes as far as to claim that the children are currently strolling with their little book. Um, they're actually talking horrors and plotting their next meeting with their two ghostly friends. The governess is like piecing things together. She says that the children have not been good, um, as she'd previously thought, but actually just empty. You know, they're just That's not even worse. Bad. Um, and that um, their lives belong to Quint and Miss Jessel. Furthermore, the governess surmises Quint and Miss Jessel want to get, let's quote, want to get the children to destroy them morally somehow. Again, it's all really vague because it's Victorian. It's all euphemisms. So we're left to like imagine the horrible things that, that is going on here. I have Mrs. no Gross. imagination. I want you to tell me directly. Well, I can tell you what they do in the show. What do they do in the show? Well, the the kids are definitely talking to the ghosts and know all about the ghosts, and there's like multiple ghosts in Aww. the show. Aww. And she actually has like little dolls in the show. I know, I saw those, and I'm like, <laughs> and like each one represents a ghost, and she keeps them in specific rooms to try and keep them in those rooms. Uh, anyway, I hate that. in her giant dollhouse. Great, but yeah, these Great. these children, it's more ambiguous. Fuck these Victorian kids. So, Miss Gross is like, damn, if that's true, you should write to the hot uncle and ask him to take the children away. And no, he'll think I'm crazy. The governess responds crazily. That's what I (laughs) But I kind of want to see what the hot uncle is going to say. He'd probably just be like, don't bother me about it. Don't bother me. (laughs) Don't worry (laughs) about it. Miss Gross throws out an alternative plan for the governess to make her employer come to her. The governess is like, are you kidding me? He'll correctly think that I'm thirsty for him. So she threatens to actually leave Bly Manor altogether if Mrs. Gross appeals to the children's uncle on her behalf. Nice guy. And Mrs. Gross is like, damn, okay, I was just trying to help. (laughs) So the governess believes that the children are aware that she knows about their relationships with Quint and Miss Jessel. And they completely avoid the subject, as Victorians are wont to do. Mm Mm-hmm. The season, and like the topic of death and like anything that could potentially lead the conversation down that path, they just avoid. 
as is right. The season changes to autumn. As day after day passes without incident, the governess thinks that perhaps her eyes have, quote, been sealed, like maybe she can't see the ghosts anymore. Um, but they're still there, and the children are still communicating with them, um, like, even in her presence. <sighs> so she's like, like, they're not gone, they're just hiding from me. <laughs> Despite this, her charges are more likable each day, even though she's convinced, like, they're lying to her and communicating with demon spirits. So, I don't know how she uh, reconciles that. What's her face, Jessel? She wasn't the governess, right? She was the old uh, housekeeper. No, no, she was the old governess. There is no old housekeeper. Okay. I, I don't know. For some reason, yeah. I thought... There's two dead was... people, and they were the ones who were frick wrecking each other. Great. The old governess and the Quint guy. Great. I love that for them. So, unable to broach the topic of Quint and Miss Jessel with the children, the governess shuts herself up in a room and starts talking to herself about it. Out loud. Kind of rehearsing, confronting them, I think. <laughs> Yay! I got. Hey, you. kids, tell me the truth. And they're like, what are you doing? And she's like, nothing. I'm rehearsing my one woman play. <laughs> it's called hey. Notice Me Hot Uncle. Still, in their company, in the company of the children, she cannot find the nerve to confront them and instead finds herself chattering more than ever just to fill in the weird, strange silences that crop up all the time. Um, these perceived stillnesses have become common when she's with her pupils, but all three refuse to acknowledge that they occur because they're perfect Victorian people the children begin to ask the governess about their uncle why hasn't he visited or written to them don't bother him don't bother him the governess has the children write letters to him with the understanding that such writings are merely educational exercises and she actually just locks them up in her trunk don't bother him like a kidnapper (laughs) don't bother him so one sunday the governess walks to church accompanied by miles this time mrs gross and flora are ahead of them on their way to church as well on the way, Miles brings up school, asking when he'll be going back. He's Never. tired of hanging around with grown women all the time, apparently, oh. um, being a 10-year-old boy, um, and points out that he's been very well behaved, except for that one night that he absconded. Um, the governess interviews Miles carefully, trying to coax the reason out of him that he was expelled from school, but it doesn't work. Uh, I don't think he even knows that he's not allowed to come back to school. Yeah, because he's like, what am I going back? She's like, um, oh. and the cook's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Miles maintains that he wants to go back to school to be around his quote own sort um, uh, and I think he means like 10 year old boys you can't bro not um, those ones to which anyway. the governess laughs yeah <laughs> and she's like there's no one of your sort Miles except maybe Flora something like that you're both so weird yeah <laughs> you're both so so creepy this close is... to the church gate yeah. Miles asks whether his uncle agrees with the governess on the matter and the governess tells Miles that she doesn't think his uncle is particularly interested in his situation. I don't bother him. <laughs> Triumphantly declaring that he will make his uncle come to Bly and care, Miles marches off into the church alone. She turns away from the church at this point. She feels defeated by Miles. She's like, I didn't get anything out of him. It's and a she's ten year old taken boy. Aback. Oh my god. Yeah, she's taken aback by the sudden revelation that he possesses, quote, consciousness and a plan. So I'm like, oh no, he wants something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't relate to that, but... <laughs> you want something. Um, with the sudden intention of leaving Bly. So she's like, F- I gotta get out of here. So she skips church and she goes straight back to the house. And then when she gets to the house, she's like seized by indecision. She's like, or do I want to leave Bly? Yeah, you do. Um, get out of there. And she impulsively sits at the bottom of the staircase. Oh, but you... she jumps up quickly because she's creeped out by the memory because it's the exact spot that Miss Ghost Jessel had sat during their last encounter. She heads for the schoolroom and where she finds, what do you know, Miss Ghost Jessel. I hate this. Why are we doing this? Seated at her table. This was your idea. No, Miss it Ghost was Isabel's. Jessel is seated at her school table. Um, again, with her head in her hands. Ah, get it out of there. Well, she does. And she rises to her feet with the air of indifference to the governess's entrance. But then she t- stares intently at the governess. Ah, stop doing that. Fucking the governess ghost. is disturbed by the feeling that she is the one who is intruding. Oh. Like the the idea that Miss Jessel is like, this is my desk. Um, and she cries out to the ghost, calling her a terrible, miserable woman. Oh. Miss Jessel looks at the governess as though she understands and then vanishes. The room is now empty and bright with sunshine and the governess is left with a strong feeling that she must not run away from Bly. Nah, bro, fucking go. Who sees ghosts and just goes, 
I'll stay. <laughs> so later when they all get back, the governess is a bit miffed that no one seems to have been, like, upset that she left and, like, didn't come. Well, like, did no one notice I wasn't at church singing the yeah, hymns? Did one no time one I ran away from me? home. I'm the soprano. <laughs> one time I ran away from home when I was, like, six for, like, an hour. And, uh... An hour. I intended to leave for longer than that, but then I got cold and mosquitoes were biting me. Oh, yeah, I remember this. And, then and when no... I came back, yeah, no one, no one had noticed. Yeah. That time. Maybe don't tell the public that. That was a sad They'd... story. <laughs> they noticed that I hadn't done my chores that I was meant to do, so I got in trouble, but that was about it. But apparently Miles told everyone that they shouldn't bother her about it. Don't um... bother her about it. <laughs> Must... <laughs> anyway, the governess tells Mrs. Gross that everything is all out between Miles and her. Another phrase that is so ambiguous it means nothing. Um, <laughs> and she goes on to say that she has had a talk, quote, with Miss Jessel, which I interpreted as like a witty joke about her encounter with it. But then she claims that Miss Jessel spoke to her about the torments of the dead and that the ghost wants Flora. So, which I did not read in the original encounter. She's so. embellishing. Or or that happened and we just didn't read it. I, I don't know. No, it didn't to happen. Mrs. Yeah. The ghost is just like, ooh. I don't say that. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> to Mrs. Gross's relief, the governess says she will send for the children's uncle. Um, but be casual about it. Don't bother him the, too much. No, I mean, just a little. The two discuss the problem of Miles's expulsion, with the governess deciding that the only reason could have been real wickedness. Like, that's the only reason he could have. Because it wouldn't have been just for being rude, because he's not. Just or, ask the fucking or principal. Or lazy, because he's not. So it would have had to be something actively naughty. Just, bro, just ask the goddamn principal. Mrs. Gross defends Miles. She says the relationship with Quint was not his fault and that she will take the blame for put, not putting an end to it sooner. Mrs. Gross then offers to write to the uncle instead. The governess is a bit of a bitch about it, sarcastically asking Mrs. Gross if she intends to write out the entire fantastical story. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah? You gonna write? You gonna tell him about a ghost? <laughs> How much are you gonna fucking write about it? <laughs> oh, do you have feelings um, for him? <laughs> <laughs> and then Mrs. Gross, like, has tears in her eyes. And she's like, you're right, you should write it. <laughs> she's like, I was gonna, but now I guess I'm not. <laughs> she's already, like, written, like, eight pages. She's like, no. <laughs> <We're shaking. laughs> um, the governess says she will write that evening. Uh, and the two go their separate ways. So the governess begins writing to the children's uncle that windy evening. It's the manuscript. It's windy. It's howling around. Restless, she gets up to listen at Miles's door. Don't do that. I'm not sure what prompts her to do this. I think it's just one of those things that comes to her. Just ghost thing. Miles calls out for her to come in, saying he heard her walk across the passage. Nah. <laughs> that ain't it, chief. That ain't it, chief. Well, it truly ain't it. I just snorted. <laughs> when the governess enters, Miles brings up the queer business of how the governess is bringing him up when he should be in school, you know? Holding her breath, the governess asks what he means, to which he replies, she knows what he means. <laughs> I hate this conversation. You know what she I mean. She tells him he will go back to school soon and points out that she hadn't known his desire to return because he had never spoken of it. Miles ponders this and asks, haven't I? His expression triggers a pang in the governess. I don't, of emotion, I guess? I don't know. She confirms that no, he's never mentioned any detail about school and she has always assumed that he was happy of life. Miles shakes his head and he says he wants to get away. When the governess asks him to clarify, he replies, you know what a boy wants. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it means. <laughs> what does a boy want? I, to go to boarding school, I guess. But also, who knows? The only thing I know is what a girl wants. And that's starring Amanda Bynes. Yeah, with Colin Firth as, as her father, father, apparently. Yeah. That's all I remember. So what a boy wants. I don't know. Go to America. His go to America. <laughs> his mom, who's... Susan Sarandon. Oh. Ooh. Right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Miles rejects the idea of going to his uncle's, but declares that his uncle must come to Bly to settle Ooh, things with him. Yes. At this, the governess begins to question Miles about the things he hasn't told her. Miles asserts that he wants a different environment um, with such serenity that the governess throws herself onto him and embraces him. Miles lets her kiss him. Again, that's that. Stop kiss doing him. that. Then tells her to let him alone. So, leave me alone, lady. Get off me. This is the not what a boy again wants. tries to pry some information from him um, for the reason for his expulsion. Um, and she uh, interprets him as having a quaver of consenting consciousness. Like he's about to tell her. 
She embraces him again when, with a chilly gust, the room turns dark and Miles shrieks. The governess exclaims that the candle's gone out, but Miles says that it was actually him who blew it out. Oh, no, you can't do that, man. (laughs) (laughs) Alana's covering her face right now. The next day, Mrs. Gross asks the governess if she's written that letter to the hot uncle. The governess affirms this, but does not mention that the letter has not been sent yet. That morning, her pupils perform brilliantly at their tasks. Great. Suspiciously brilliant. <laughs> what the fuck are their tasks anyway? Just blowing out candles from like across the room? Because well done, you goddamn ghost man child. After dinner, Miles approaches the governess to ask if she would like him to play piano for her. She is delighted, and he plays very well for quite some time until the governess realizes his hands weren't moving. Quite a length of time. <laughs> Hand hook car door and <laughs> piano. <laughs> yes. What's that from again? I don't know. It was a meme. Like an urban legend meme. Yeah, hand hook. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Man hand hooked car door or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. They're making out of the car. And it's... Yeah, no, I yeah. know exactly. What... Yeah. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there with you. So she realizes after quite a while has passed that Flora is nowhere to be seen. She's like, wait a minute. She asks Miles. She asks Miles where his sister is. He's like, I'm playing he piano. Asks, I don't know. Yeah, he asks, "How should I know?" And he laughs. She thinks he's been deliberately intercepting her. The governess searches for Flora in her bedroom upstairs and in other rooms downstairs, but she can't find her. Flora is not with Mrs. Gross or the maids. The oh, the cook. Where's the cook? Huh? <laughs> or him? Oh. The governess has a feeling that Flora is at some distance away, uh, and assumes that she must be with Miss Jessel. The ghost. Horrified, Mrs. Gross asks where Miles is. The governess is like, where do you think? In the schoolroom with Peter Quint. (laughs) Um, She's like a little bit hysterical right now. She then declares that the trick's played, um, like a trick's been played on her, and informs Mrs. Gross that Miles has given her the runaround deliberately so the children could hold intercourse with their respective corrupting spirits. Ew. Mrs. Gross asks about the letter and the governess draws it from her pocket and leaves it on the table for the servant, Luke, to take. Although Mrs. Gross is loath to leave Miles alone in the house, the governess persuades her to accompany her outside to search for Flora. She's like, no, we gotta go together to look for Flora. The governess... Is Miles still, like, playing piano, like Billy Joel style? (laughs) Just cackling on... (laughs) 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 Well, like, he's, he's, like, doing tricks. Like, he's, like, sitting behind him. He's like... (laughs) Hello, my baby. With, like, his leg. (laughs) He's like playing the um, Jeopardy theme song. The governess and Mrs. Gross head out to the lake as the governess is convinced that Flora would have returned to the spot where Miss Jessel last appeared. Sure. Flora is neither there nor nor can they see her on the opposite bank. The governess determines that Flora must have taken the little boat in the lake, which is missing from its usual resting place and nowhere to be seen. How She can't she sail on that. It's too small. It's not seaworthy. Oh, not the like the leaf thing. Just like a, an actual little Oh. <laughs> Um, she leads Mrs. Gross to the other side of the lake. Soon they find the boat, and shortly thereafter they come upon Flora, who is smiling. Oh, uh, don't smile! That's worse! I hate it. Flora oh. plucks... <laughs> Flora plucks a spray, like a little, uh, bouquet of fern. Mm-hmm. Of fern leaves. In what the <laughs> governess assumes to be an empty performance of innocence and sweetness. She's like, oh, I'm just picking some flowers. Oh, me? Officer? <laughs> and she waits for the governess and mrs gross to approach as mrs gross embraces flora passionately flora glances at the governess from over mrs gross's shoulder with a grave expression (laughs) mrs gross lets the child go flora speaks first asking where their things are as they are all without hats um she then asks where miles is the governess says her voice breaking i will tell you flora where miles is if you tell me where miss jessel is Got him. Her. Flora glares at the governess. And Mrs. Gross cries out in shock. <gasps> at the pronouncement, I suppose. She's like, oh, the dead. <laughs> Names of the dead. No. The governess and grasps Mrs. Gross's arms. Arm. Just one. Not both of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she points with the other arm. Um, out where she can see the figure of Miss Jessel on the opposite bank. Ugh. And she's she's thrilled. She's like, there! Like, she's finally, she's brought on a proof, she says. The governess is surprised, though, by Flora's reaction. She doesn't look, follow, she doesn't follow the direction um, the governess is pointing. 
Um, but she glares. She continues to glare at the governess. I'm vomiting here. I'm puking. I hate this. This is the worst. <laughs> Mrs. Gross protests, asking what the governess she sees. Because she can't see it. Oh, you fucking dick. You goddamn dick. Go- no. Fuck you, Henry. God- fuck you, Fonzie. <laughs> oh, I'm sick. I'm sick of this. I'm ill. I'm- um, the governess is astonished. Her heart's sinking. She points out Miss Jessel again. She's like, you can't see her. She's right there. Uh, Mrs. Gross, however, sees nothing. She's pleading that they return to the house. Flora, who the governess fancies, has turned almost ugly. <laughs> um, exclaims that she doesn't nor has ever seen anything and demands that Mrs. Gross take her away from the governess. <laughs> Convinced that Miss Jessel is speaking through Flora, the governess declares Flo- Flora lost. The Shutter Island gaslighting her. She's lost. Uh, and she tells Mrs. Gross to go. The governess gives in to a long moment of grief. She realises that she's been resting her forehead on the damp earth and grass for an unknown period of time when she sort of comes to her senses. Yeah, we've um, all been she's there. She's like, yeah. Um, before she returns home, noticing the boat is back in its usual, usual position, assuming Flora must have done it somehow. At the house, she finds Flora her usual self and is joined by Miles in silence. In the morning, however, Mrs. Gross wakes the governess with news that Flora is sick and is now terrified of the governess, to which her sickness is chalked up. She's like, can't handle it. She's like, you, you're the problem. Get out. This is me right now with you and this story. I'm, I'm <laughs> ill. You, you're the problem. Flora has apparently said nothing about Miss Jessel. Only, only the governess. The governess, surmising that Flora wants to get rid of her, concocts a plan calling for Mrs. Gross to take Flora straight to her uncle in London and for the governess to stay a bligh with Miles to try and get him on her side, to persuade him to tell her the truth about all this business, the ghosts being expelled, everything. Don't and just she feels you at the want moment to find is, out. Just leave. She feels that's really what he wants to do. She, he's like on the verge of telling her. No. She demands that Flora and Miles have no contact though prior to Flora's departure in case Flora can like poison him against her, presumably. Mrs. Gross is a little freaked, as you might be, but agrees that Flora must leave the place immediately. She states that Flora has been saying some really shocking things about the governess. Like what? Um, I don't know. Again, it could be run the gamut from just bad language to accusations, right? Because it's like shocking things. What does that mean? Is that bad words? Is that accusations that she's done something horrible or something like that? Okay. And she's like, I don't know where she learned this stuff. And um, where she picked up this stuff. And the governess bitterly laughs and she's like, I have an idea where she learned it. The ghost, she thinks, obviously. Mrs. Gross tells the governess she believes what the governess has been saying about the ghost and everything. Remembering her letter, the governess says it will arrive before Mrs. Gross does. But Mrs. Gross informs her that the letter was not sent because Miles stole it. Mrs. Gross then declares that Miles must have been expelled for stealing probably letters what why maybe he stole letters what the governess reveals that the letter contained only a demand for an interview with the hot uncle and nothing actually about miles's expulsion so with mrs gross and flora gone the governess focuses on her impending confrontation with miles she senses that the maids and men at Bly are staring at her. And she's she, like she squaring reacts. up against a 10 year old. She's just like, right. literally, she's like bustling ar- around to like appear like remarkably firm as what Henry James writes. So, like, large and in charge. She's like, Meh. watch out for governess. <laughs> you, you got it. Um, it doesn't seem to affect Miles, though. Yeah, I feel um, like Miles maid, right now. <laughs> Yeah, the maid, the governess, learns that Miles has breakfasted with Flora before Flora's departure. Oh, motherfucker, they weren't meant to. They have dinner together. Nah. And Miles asks about his sister's illness. She's like, hey, he's like, hey, why is Flora sick, by the way? I don't know. Ask one of your ghost buddies. She reassures him that Flora will be better soon. He's like, did it come all at w- come on all at once? And she's like, no. And then he's like, well, then why didn't you send her earlier? And, he, and she's like, well, we sent her at just the right time. <laughs> <laughs> And the conversation continues with the governess proclaiming that Flora was not too ill to travel. Their meal is brief when it is done and the waiter is gone. Because you have waiters if you're rich. Don't have to be at a restaurant. Every day's restaurant day. Uh, I just burped and I feel like that's a good response to that. Miles is like, so we're all alone. No. (laughs) The governess demurs that, well, like, we're not totally alone. And Miles agrees that there are the others, 
No, don't say that. Miles, presumably he means the other servants, right? Nah. Turning back around, oh, Miles turns to the window. Then he turns back around and expresses his happiness that Bly agrees with him, even if it doesn't agree with uh, Flora. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> the governess asks if he has enjoyed his day of freedom, because she can, he's just kind of been roaming around, they haven't done school or anything. Miles turns the question on her, asking if she enjoyed it. These kids, they, they, they just got her. He's just... Yeah. He says that if they stay on at Bly together, she will be more alone than he will. Right. What does that mean? What does any of this mean? I don't know. The governess says that she's missed his company, it's, and it's the only reason she's stayed on. To kind of be there for him, even if she's not his teacher. Sure. Exactly. Okay. At the moment. Miles' expression turns grave. The two skirt around the issue, obviously, of what the governess wants to know. This truth from him about the ghosts and this expulsion and everything. Um, she says now is the time and place, and she asks if he wants to go out again. No. He assents, saying he will tell her everything, but not now. Oh. First he needs to see Luke, the servant who delivers letters. The governess consents, but she says, before you go, you have to answer one thing for me. Okay, what's that? And he's up? like, okay. Miles, did you take my letter? Alright. Before he can answer, Peter well, Quint appears at the window. Nah, nah, he did it. Get him out of there. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. Exactly as before looking through the window at her. Uh. The governess bolts to her feet and she draws Miles close to her. So his back's to the window. He can't see what she can see. Uh. Um, and Miles confesses that he did took the letter. In a bit of a shock. He's like, yeah, I took it. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, it's like I pressed imagine. up against her boobs. And he's like, oh, but, but. <laughs> the cook. Um, like, she's what? believed, it seems. Oh. Um, moaning with joy is what Henry James says she does. So, mm. it's, a bit, it's a bit weird. I don't like that, but Victorian times. I don't like any of it, Sandy. The governess tightly embraces Miles so tight she can feel the quickness of his pulse. Miles says he wanted to know what the letter said about him, but found it said nothing and then burned it. I guess to cover up the fact that he stole it. I'm not really sure. That's what he did. The governess asks if he had stolen letters at school and that was why he was expelled. Peter Quint's still here. (laughs) He's just like, eh? (laughs) I think this is happening fast. I think I'm taking longer with it than it's meant to be taking. Great. Surprised, Miles asks if she had known that he couldn't go back to school. The governess claims that she's known everything. Ooh. Denying the charge, Miles said, says, oh, he's like, no, I didn't steal letters. And she's like, well, what did you do? And he says, I said things. Oh, to boys. So and she's like, boys you didn't like? And he's like, no, to boys I did like. They s- expelled him for being gay? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It could be anything. Like, I don't know. Maybe he just was like, hey, you guys ever heard about sex? <laughs> <laughs> so the governess presses the issue. Miles shifts. And she's like, no, you're saying it. So she springs forward upon him and she presses him against her. Miles asks if she is here. Is she here? Is what he says. <laughs> she assumes he means Jessel. And he might. He's so the, the governess says, no, it is the, quote, coward horror that huh? is here. <laughs> Peter like, Quinn. no, it's that coward horror. I Peter know, Quinn's like, oh. <laughs> Miles looks around and searches with his eyes in the direction of the governess's gaze and doesn't appear to see anything. Yeah, but yeah. Cries out, but Miles cries out, Peter Quint, you devil. So. Like in a mean way or like, a, ah, you devil. Like a... I think, I mean, okay. this is like a line that you could write essays about because it has a dash. Um... Oh. Not a comma. Oh, I hate so that. Peter oh. Quint, you devil. So is he calling Peter Quint the devil? Is he calling the governess the devil? Is he calling, like, I don't know. Oh, you fucking dick. I'm out. I'm, no. No. We only have one sentence of the story left, Sam. No. It's even worse. Keep going. The governess yells at the ghost and points him out. But Miles' heart has stopped. Is that it? That's the end? That's the end. Fuck this. So there's a couple theories. I hate there's this. There's two main schools of thought. Let's... One, the ghosts are real. Two, the governess imagines the ghosts. That's why the kids start acting weird, because she's acting weird. And she actually smothers Miles to death in this last scene. I don't care. I've got goosebumps over my goddamn goose body. 
<laughs> Alana's spanning herself. Yeah, she's, You're right, Alana. You're making her run out of she already is. Oh, fuck we this. We made it, kiddo. Oh, my goodness. Oh, nah, man. If that's how scary that one is, I don't even want to know. <laughs> well, like I said, I think the book is scarier than the than the show. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure if Hill House is the other way around. Shut or, the uh, fuck up the right now. You, you enough out of you. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. Cassandra Widom, you yeah. devil. Go find us on a literature underscore podcast um, on Instagram. Well, how would they have gotten uh, here if they didn't go through our Instagram? If they just found it, if it was like recommended on Spotify? So, Why you gotta shoot down all the things I say, huh? Because you told me about these goddamn ghosts. Why can't you be happy for me? You and your stupid ghosts? I don't know. I don't know, Sandy. Don't um, know. And if you're on Instagram and you're like, hey, I'm studying a book or I, I like a book or I, I don't want to read a book and you want to ask us to do it, why not just shoot us a message? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that book that we you We will want us never to do. do another scary book, though. Oh, well, we'll see. We'll I've see. put my entire foot down. If we ever do something scary again, I will literally, like, scat for the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. Amazing. Hell, happy Halloween. <laughs>so excited for your 30th birthday why what are you gonna i'm gonna do? hire like <laughs> 10 strippers and buy like six bags of cocaine hire that and that's just that for in me love with. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do about you <laughs> no your 30th uh, what, was birthday. it my 25th birthday oh that was great the strippers and then i fell in love yeah with there the was stripper. a stripper there that the song is true you can't fall in love with the stripper <laughs> it was beautiful he was beautiful ah <sighs> It's just nice. It's just nice. He had glasses on when he wasn't stripping because he couldn't see. And I'm like, yeah, a little Clark Kent energy. Like His routine Clark- was a Baywatch themed. Oh my god, I loved it. And he chose you, and I'm like, if it wasn't your birthday, I swear to God, yeah, I'd be it was pulling just your hair. You gave by me that now. stupid sash to wear. It's, I think I had stupid. a sash. <laughs> oh, oh, it's stupid that you're. <laughs> <sighs> Sam has a sash then- every year. And then uh, your husband came with us, because that's the kind of thing the three of us like to do. Yeah, it was fun. Um, he's dead. So, another stripper, stripper Peter Quint. Peter Quint. <laughs>